You sold a website, now what? Growing up, it's kind of frowned upon to ask a lot of questions. You don't want to be seen as stupid, so you just don't ask. It's exactly the opposite in real life. The more questions you ask your client, the smarter and more diligent you look. With that being said, it's time to ask your client questions or yourself if you're building your own side project. Before we start, I'd like to make a quick note that normally you'd ask at least some of these questions before the project begins so you can develop an accurate scope of work and price estimate. And another pre-PS, as with everything in life, use good judgment. Don't blindly ask every single question on my list. Make sure it makes sense for your, your, your unique situation and client. And if a question comes up that I didn't include, still ask it. You need as much information as possible to build a phenomenal website. These background questions should give you a good understanding of your client's business. Make sure these answers are crystal clear. What do you do or sell? This is pretty self-explanatory, but make sure you totally understand it. What problems do your prospects have that your business solves? People buy things to solve their problems. This will help you craft your copy by evoking emotion because you know how and when to press people's buttons. Three, describe your target audience. Before you make a website, you must understand the audience you're creating the website for. Not only will you want to know their demographics, like their age and gender, but you'll also want to know their psychographics, which I include a link to what the, that is below. Two of the most important questions are what motivates your ideal audience and what do they value most? Do they want a quick sale or are they willing to pay top dollar? Do they want the most attentive service or the most convenient? Of course, there are more questions you could ask, and you can look below for a link to a post I wrote about buyer personas. It has some good questions to ask. What questions do you get from customers and prospects a lot, and how do you respond to them? This will help you write copy that relieves visitors' most common objections and drives them to action. You could use this too if you have a frequently asked questions page. What is the purpose of the website? Do they want to increase brand awareness or generate more leads, increase revenue, tie the website to a business goal so you understand the client's underlying motivation for building a website? Make sure you tie the website to a business goal so you understand the client's underlying motivation for building a website. This will help you be worth more and therefore your work. Who are your top competitors? Who's the biggest threat and why? This question is really important. Many times clients are terrible at explaining what they do, and they rarely describe it in the form of benefits as opposed to features because they're so close to the product or service themselves. What they can easily do is rattle off a short list of competitors. Visit the competitors' websites and read the site content, like actually read it. Piece together any information you can to see where your client fits into the market and how can they can be better than everyone else in it. Doing so will result in the best website in the local category. How are you better than each of these top competitors? What are your differentiators? A differentiator must be three things. It must be true, it must be important to your target audience, and it must be provable. The problem is most differentiators are wishy-washy and fluffy at best. For example, how many number one realtors have you met? Probably a shit ton. What did this tagline mean to you though? Probably nothing, because they didn't prove they're number one in anything, they just said it. Ask yourself and your client these questions to drill down their uh, differentiators. Do I get things done faster? Do I offer superior service in some way? How? Do I save my customers money or time? Am I more expensive or less expensive than competitors? Do I offer a better guarantee? Am I easier to do business with? What makes me different? Why should people do business with me instead of my competitors? Try to get the answers, try to get answers that will evoke emotion in prospects, but make sure it's genuine. What consumers care about most? If you think price is the only good differentiator, think again. People care about more than just getting the cheapest deals, according to a survey by Yodel. Here's what they care about. Personalized experiences. 96% of consumers felt that small businesses did a better job when it came to customizing goods and services to meet clients' needs. Quality. 72% of consumers report a willingness to pay a local business more in exchange for better goods or services. Supporting community. 48% of consumers report a willingness to pay a local business more in exchange for supporting their community. And last but not least, my favorite personally as a consumer, 67% of consumers want small to medium businesses to provide better websites. The most requested feature was the ability to make payments and book appointments online. Style and design questions. This will help you get a taste for their um, design, style, vibe that they want. How would you describe the vibe, feel, or voice of your business? How do you want people to feel when they experience business with you? This might be a hard question for your client to answer, especially a small business owner. To make it easier on them, consider asking them to name a brand or two they admire and why. 
Do you have specific company colors or branding guidelines that must be followed? In a perfect world, the branding style guide will be beautiful. In a decent world, they won't have guidelines. In a terrible world, they'll have a mediocre or bad style guidelines. Don't be afraid to push back if their style guidelines are shit. Bad fonts, dull colors, outdated icons, anything that looks bad. I don't think your first few or hell any of your clients will have branding guidelines, so you can usually get away with doing what you think is right. What websites do you like and why? The website doesn't have to be a competitor website. It can be any site they love the style, design, vibe of. This will give you an idea for their tastes. What do your current competitors' websites have that you want? This will give you insight into the depth and functionality uh, they want, as well as the number of pages. Name three things that are most important in your site design. This will help you make sure you deliver to their expectations. How many pages do you need? If you're not sure, would you like me to make a recommendation? A page is like home, about, contact, frequently asked questions, services, etc. Don't just blindly follow the pages they tell you they want though. They may be wrong about the information, how the information should be divided up among the pages. About page. The about page is the second most viewed uh, page on, on websites. Um, so you have to make sure it's good. These questions will help you build it properly and you can read more about about pages in the link below. Would you like to feature your team on your about page? I highly recommend doing so. You'll need a headshot and a short bio, including formal title and any social media links for each person, depending on how you design it. Why did you start your business? Get them to tell you the story of how they started their business. Look for juicy insights that will help you craft compelling copy. Try to dig deeper for this one. You want to evoke some sort of emotion in your client so you elicit a better answer. Maybe they started their business to make money, but why did they choose this particular type of business? What spurred the idea? What types of actions do you want users to take on your website? Do you want them to purchase, subscribe, download, contact you, call you? Um, and this question you don't necessarily have to ask, but it is good to ask. Tell me about yourself. This will help you craft the story and history sections on the about page. There are a bunch of questions in the um, questionnaire template that I linked to below for the, it's a Google Doc template, and it has all these, um, a list of like 10, 10 to 12 questions that um, you should ask to like get answers out of this because just tell me about yourself is a really hard question, so you're going to need to like handhold. Um Okay, so logistical questions. These are the general admin-like questions. Do you have any return or shipping policies I should know about? Obviously, only ask this question to relevant businesses. What keywords do you think your prospects and customers are searching for online to find your offering? This question is a good place to start when doing keyword research, which you'll have to do before you finish the website project. It will also be a good starting place for choosing the right words to describe, your bu describe the business. Do you have a Google Analytics account? It's likely they probably don't have an account, especially if they don't have a website. They definitely don't have an account. You can check websites like um, builtwith.com or Ghostery to see what they're using behind the scenes if they do have a website, though. If you have to create the account, make sure you give them admin rights to their uh, Google Analytics account and transfer ownership to them once you're done working together. It's just the right thing to do. Do you have any social profiles? If so, can you send links? I recommend Googling for these yourself. If you're having trouble finding something, then ask. If they don't have any, at the very least, consider making them a Facebook page. What's your business's location, phone numbers, and email addresses that you want people to be able to contact? You can probably find this online too, but I always ask because it's better to be safe than sorry. And make sure to get information on each separate location if they have multiple locations. Um, and it's always good to confirm if what you find online is accurate. So I would just be like, can you confirm this? If you find the location, phone number, and email address. Store hours. This is like a really important thing. When you're Googling for a business, you want to know what their hours are usually. At least I do. Um, so what are your store hours? If this is a brick and mortar business, they'll likely have store hours. If it's an online business, then consider getting the hours they're available during the day for support. Do you own a domain name? You need to know whether you need to purchase a domain name or not. If they don't own one, tell them you can purchase it for them, but they'll have to reimburse you or give them detailed instructions on how to purchase one. If they want you to suggest a domain name and you're unsure what to suggest, we'll go over that soon. And one more thing. Domains are usually free when you purchase managed WordPress hosting for the first time with GoDaddy, just as an FYI. Where did you purchase your domain name? You need to know this so you can connect the domain name to the hosting account. More on this later. 
Do you have a hosting provider like GoDaddy or Bluehost currently? You need a hosting provider in order for your site to go live. So this is important. If not, do you want a recommendation? I highly recommend GoDaddy. When would you ideally like this completed by? Ask them what they'd ideally like this completed by. Are they on a strict timeline? It's always beneficial to get a deadline. It makes you more accountable to yourself. I know like when I'm doing projects and I don't have a deadline, I will procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate. So you got to set yourself a deadline if you're like me, at least. <laughs> Which email marketing service do you use? You need to know this so you can connect an email subscribe form to the site. Marketing questions. Can you send me a high res logo file? Many small to medium businesses won't have a logo or the one they have may be poorly designed and unoptimized. If this is your case, consider redesigning their logo or making it text based. Do you have a tagline? Some businesses do, ask. Do you have any customer testimonials online or off that I could use? You can sometimes find these by just Googling, especially if they're a local business. So research before you ask this. Check their Facebook page if they have one. Check Google My Business. Check Yelp um, or any other local directories. If not, can you provide me with a list of customers to contact for testimonials? Testimonials or even better case studies are so important if you want to increase trust from new visitors. Go the extra mile and reach out to a few customers. It will also help you learn more about the website's target audience, which will help you design a better website. Okay, whew, that was a lot of questions, right? Um, so how do you get your client's answers? While you could email your client a questionnaire, I recommend not being lazy and actually asking your client these questions face-to-face -face or over the phone. You'll get the best answers that way just because you can ask follow-up questions right away, saving back and forth emails. More importantly though, interviewing your client in real time will lead to more colorful answers. People don't usually hold back over the phone or in person as they would via email or Google Docs. It's just less work to talk than to type. And definitely less daunting. Think of it like an interview for a cool story you're writing. Ask if you can record the conversation. I use tape a call in case you miss any nuggets of wisdom. And if you don't want to transcribe the call yourself like me, then you can pay a small fee to get a transcribe via rev. It's like a dollar a minute or something like that. Um, and that's all for this, uh, this video. Next, we're going to leave your client alone for a while and get ready to uh, and start preparing to build your site. Next, we're going to create a brand style guide. Yay, fun, fun, fun.